Hi guys, so I wanted to talk to you today about my herb spiral. Now, this is one year old. I built this last winter, and or last autumn, and planted it with what I could then. This is really one year's growth here, and we've got some amazing plants. Uh, I mean, this sage has just done tremendously well. They're all grown from seed. And this sage plant is just incredible. I love the smell. I love the smell of sage. I love herbs and I do a lot of cooking. So I built this herb spiral just outside our kitchen and it's a really simple thing to do. And I want to talk to you all about how you would build one yourself, how you would design it, etc. etc. Now this one is in need of a bit of attention because obviously we can't mow up close to it. So we've got these weeds that all need pulling. This is this is the remnants of some honey fungus that grew in patches here. I harvested a lot of it. Um, but I'll just try and pull some of these weeds to show you how it would look when it's a bit tidier. So the herb spiral is basically a, a spiral that you can build out of anything. You can build it out of, out of wood, out of timber, out of uh, stones as I've done here, or out of anything else that basically spirals up towards the middle creating that spiral and the reason you do that creates lots of microclimates you've got effectively a south facing side here a north facing side there and then the stuff on top is obviously going to be much more free draining so if you've got something that likes dryish roots like the rosemary up there you could plant that at the top and then at the bottom stuff that likes to be a little bit wetter so you've created all this diverse microclimate within this little area and if you extended this out this would be about eight meters long. So effectively, I've got one eight meter bed wrapped into a spiral here with all those microclimates in it. So it means I'm able to grow things like uh, fennel, mint, rosemary, sage, chives, all these things in one little area that I can come and pick from. And of course, where the center's raised, it makes harvesting that little bit easier as well, rather than having to reach over and down. So I'll talk to you a little bit about how I set it out and why I planted what I planted where. Like I say, it's a little bit worse to wear at the moment. There's a few weeds growing up through it and it needs a good weed. And I'll also cut back quite a lot of these to make some space for some additional planting because I've got a few things that I plan to plant in here that I haven't had chance to do yet. But I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the planning and how I started. So I just started by making a list of all the things that I wanted to grow in here. Now, I've gone away from the annuals and I've focused on perennials here and we're going to grow annuals elsewhere. But what I did is I basically just, um, I made a little list of things that I needed to think about. So how much sun it required. So if it wanted really to be in full sun, like oregano, I drew a little sun. If it could be in full sun or half sun, you know, partly shade. And if it was happy growing in the shade, like bay, then it would get a half sun. Now, that's the first column I've done, or the second column. The first column I've done is spread. Anything that I need to be wary of spreading. So again, mint, I need to be wary of spread, so I need to put that in a pot. So although we've got mint down there, we've got mint just in there, um, it's actually in a pot in the ground, so it can't spread too much. And then the next important column was draining, whether it was happy in free draining, whether it wanted free draining soil, basically dry roots. So um, oregano wants some dry roots or whether it's, it wants to be a little bit wetter, something like sorrel or again, mint and whether it was in between. And once I'd done all that and I'd, I'd made my notes, the next thing I did was I, I drew the spiral out um, and allocated numbers to each plot because what that did, that allowed me to know what sort of climates and stuff I'd actually built, if you like. And then finally, and this, you know, you don't have to do anything nearly as fancy as this. If this isn't your style, then, uh, you know, obviously it's not required, but I love all this kind of thing. So this is what I did next is I just did a chart and basically um, corresponding to the numbers, corresponding to the numbers. So each number along the top, is a different place in the spiral so i listed my herbs down the side and then across the top the numbers in the pot so then i would write I'm, i'll try to pick one that lent itself to a specific place rather than a, another so let's start with oregano so oregano what i did is i had a look back here and it wants to be in full sun and it wants free draining soil so i looked here and i basically crossed out anything that wasn't going to suit it so i crossed out all the 
for oregano, I put a line through all the ones that weren't in full sun and all the ones that didn't have free draining soil till eventually I had lots of marks. Then what I could do is I drew a circle in its actual resting place. And as soon as I put a circle in there, so for example, if I put oregano in spot number 13, then I could put a cross through all the other 13s because nothing else was going there. And that's how I basically decided what was going where. And this is my final design. So this told me what to plant where. And for the most part, it's been very, very successful. Now, at the bottom, at the very bottom, I put a little bit of plastic liner in because the idea was I was going to grow watercress down there in a little pond, but that didn't work because of the chickens. And to be fair, you know, a lot of this is all messed about with and pulled around and again that's because of the chickens but um, overall I'm really really happy with it and the next thing I'm going to do now is just take some of these back some of the ones that have got a bit big or some of the ones that you know that we just want to harvest we're going to take them in and we're going to dry some we're going to dry some of the herbs so I've got a little bit of parsley growing down here on the other side of the mint this is the mint as I say that's in a pot um, then we've got the sage and we've got some chives back here marjoram and some sorrel all mixed together in there and then as we go round we've got lots and lots of fennel which I'll probably harvest quite a bit of this now um, and then we've got quite a lot of stinging nettles <laughs> which I need to take care of they're not supposed to be in there um, and then round the back here we've got some chervil down under here we've also got some chamomile some chamomile that we'll use for tea which is doing really really well finally we've got uh, rosemary and then down in here there it is the oregano if you can just see that and some lavender so we're going to harvest a bit of this now and then set some of this out to dry inside the reason i do that because i like using fresh but sometimes it's nice to have the stuff on hand in the kitchen so i've just quickly popped around it and done all the you know just a really rudimentary weeding and as you can see it's um it's looking a bit better already. It needs a lot of work and I'll spend a bit of time up here with it this year and I will, um, you know, do a proper bit of weeding. Maybe do a little bit of repair work on some of the walls because they're starting to crumble. But, you know, I built this just out of rubble, just out of stones that were lying around the garden. And it took me about an hour and a half to build it. And once I planted it and everything, you know, I probably invested about two and a half hours in this in total to get it built. And then once it was up and running, I don't do anything. I don't water it. I literally don't go near it until I've just come up because I need to harvest something. So um, it's super low maintenance, super easy to take care of, looks nice. Um, once I've titivated these walls a little bit, it'll look even nicer. Um, and it's so functional. It's a way of creating all these microclimates in such a small space. And like I say, it's several meters worth if you were to plant this in a row. And we've got it all here in this little tiny circle. So I've just harvested a few things I've now. Got some uh, fennel here, some thyme, some rosemary, and some other bits and pieces. I'm going to go in and dry these now. Now we don't use a tremendous amount of dried herbs because we've got this right outside the kitchen door. So when we want some rosemary or whatever, we tend to just come and pick it. But um, I am going to dry some of this for two reasons. Firstly, I hate to see it going to waste, and uh, with Christmas coming up, we're going to be using a lot of sage, and. I don't mind saying that, you know, if the weather's horrendous, then I don't mind using dried stuff um, that we've got from the garden, you know, instead of coming out and picking it in the pouring rain, you know? So um, I do like to have some dried stuff on hand. So we're gonna take this in and dry it. And if you dry it, we're gonna use a dehydrator, but you can dry it anyway. You like to by hanging it up. If you do dry herbs, it's always best to hang them upside down like that. That way the oils in the herbs run down into the leaves they don't just sort of dry out into the stem where you're not really going to use them so um, if you're going to dry them by hanging then hang them upside down but once they're dry they'll store in a airtight container just like they will from the shop you know pretty much indefinitely so um, we're never without fresh herbs and we're never without dried herbs because we've always got them on hand so I hope you found that useful I do encourage you to do one because it's so incredibly useful to have this just outside your kitchen door it takes up no space and it looks after itself i've probably come up here before today to do work on it you know weed it or whatever just once since i planted it over a year ago and other than that you know it just gets on with it it looks after itself because we've created the environments 
that the plants want so they're going to thrive and they're going to beat out most of the weed competition you saw then I, obviously I pulled out the stinging nettles that were in there um, but other than that there really isn't any weeds there's or very few you know there's a few in the top there that I'll get to next time but there's very little going on there that I don't want going on there and of course you know these weeds growing up the top here once I plant something else in there which I will this year that won't have that bare soil to get in so super easy super low maintenance super productive and you know i just can't recommend them enough so there you go herb spirals if you find these videos valuable there's several ways you can support them and the easiest of which is to just subscribe to our channel and like this video press that like button now um, if you do subscribe press that bell so that you're notified when our videos drop and the other thing you can do is leave me a comment down below let me know what you think are you going to build one have you built one is yours better than mine let me know We've also got a podcast which drops every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. That's the Self-Sufficient Hub podcast. You can get that wherever you get your podcasts. If you want to go a little bit further, you could become a patron. And you can do that by going to patreon.com forward slash self-sufficient hub. And all those links are in the description. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. And I'll speak to you very soon.